Hey guys, I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop. It's October 29th, 2020. We're on block six of Socialites. Um, thanks so much for listening to me today instead of Friday since I have a personal commitment tomorrow. I'm going to show you this week's blocks. It is called Devoted and the designer is Robin Pickens. So I made all three sizes. It's a free pattern. So I have made it in the nine inch, the six inch, and the three inch size. And last week, one of you guys was asking if I was gonna auction any of these off. And when I was thinking about it, my, my little projects that I do that are small, I won't auction those, but I can auction one or two of these quilts when I put them together. So I'll just, once I put them together, decide and we'll auction two, we can just auction two of them off for Make-A-Wish. So this again is by Robin Pickens. It's called Devoted. And it's gonna be two large half square triangles. And then two, three, four, five, six. A couple of small ones, I haven't counted them yet. And I can show you a couple of different ways you can turn your fabrics for a fun look. And if you hear that noise, we have some construction, but we also have some rain outside. So sorry about that. So these are my three blocks that I made with Homestead by April Rosenthal, which is now in stock. And like I said, I'm gonna make all three sizes. I'm gonna show you our sample maker blocks. This one is Teresa made. It's quotation by Zen Chic. It's kind of funny because you can hardly, the gray is kind of mixing in with the gray of the mat. And then Deborah made Figs and Shirtings by Fig Tree Quilts. And Terry made Folk Tale by Layla Boutique. I love this collection. I haven't made anything from it yet, but I really want to. And I think it will really mix nicely with rust and smoke or smoke and rust that's coming out. I think you could add to it. This is Shine On by Bonnie and Camille. And Shine On Yardage arrived, was loaded yesterday. The pre-cuts and the kits have not shipped from Moda yet. So if you're wondering about that, get your yardage now before it sells out. And then the very last one is Cider by Basic Gray and Angel made this one. So thank you to Teresa, Deborah, Terry, Sue, and Angel. You can get such a different look with this free pattern. And you can see everyone presses different. So you can press however you feel most comfortable. So we're gonna um, jump right in today and we're gonna sew some blocks. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get my binder out. We're gonna go to block six. Pull that out. I'm gonna pull both pages out. I'm loving my binder. And this pattern is two pages, so you can find this on our blog or on the What's New page at Fat Quarter Shop. Completely free pattern and on our blog, our fabric requirements. So what I'm going to do first is I'm gonna block out the nine inch size, because I'm gonna do the six inch. And I will show you my previous blocks that I've made, but I'm first gonna just block these out so that I don't accidentally cut the wrong size because if I don't actually put something on top of it, I will end up cutting the wrong size. So I'm gonna show you my previous blocks really quick. I'm gonna make a little table runner out of these. So these are my previous blocks that I've shown, blocks one through five. So I will, I'm showing you in Homestead and, and just different collections. I'm gonna make something fun out of this when I get enough blocks together. So those are my previous ones, and I love this collection. Um, I already have a quilt out of it at home, and I actually have two in the works. Okay, so we're gonna be making half square triangles. We're gonna make two large and 14 small. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna tell you the sizes right now if you wanna use half square triangle paper on triangles on a roll instead of the way we wrote it. We wrote it the traditional way, but if you wanna use triangle paper, which is right here, for the large three inch block, you would use one and a half finished. 
The six inch block you would use three inch finished. The nine inch block you would use four and a half finished. So I'm gonna be doing the three inch. So I'm gonna find my three inch right here. This is what I'm gonna use for my large. For your small, you need half inch, which we're actually in production to make. So it doesn't exist quite yet, but you could use the one inch size and trim it down. For the six inch block, you need one inch paper. And the nine inch block, you need one and a half inch paper. So I need one inch paper for my six inch block. And so that's what we need and I'll put these away. So I've got my paper together. I need to make two A and Ds, but that is going to be one square of each. So you would start with one four inch square, stitch it and trim it down, or you can just use one piece of this paper. So I am going to trim this. And like I said, we're doing construction, so you're gonna hear a lot of noise. And you're just gonna have to pretend that, pretend like all of us that you haven't heard it all week. <laughs> so this is my paper for my large. For B and E, you need seven two inch squares or seven of these squares. So I'm gonna cut, I will leave one on the roll. So I will just kind of cut and I will, I'll just leave this and then um, I'll just leave that on there. And when I'm done with these at home, what I do is I put washi tape on the end. So I'll put this away. And then I'm going to need two one and a half inch squares from my C and F. So the fabrics I picked today are, I'm not them real quick. They're actually just from some leftovers that I had on something else I did. And it was already starched, so I'm going to use that. So I've got them ironed right sides together. And I'm going to just pin this in place. So I'll put a couple pins. And then I'll put a couple pins. When I'm pinning, I try to pin away from the lines. Now I will just cut around this to have as little waste as possible. And so you can either sew it like this, or you can even trim this. I'll probably just trim this little piece on. This little piece down will be easier to handle on the machine. So I'm going to sew these. Now, from I also need two one and a half inch squares. So I'm going to do a three. I'm just going to cut a little piece. And then I will save this in my bucket and this in my bucket for later. I'm going to cut a one and a half inch piece and then two one and a half inch squares. And cutting them at the same time is saving me time. So now everything is cut. These are my F's. And these are my C's, so I'm gonna leave those there. The other letters are all on the half square triangle, so I don't need those. If you're ever cutting a bunch and you're gonna come back to it later, 
for example, if you're gonna cut like 20 blocks or something and you wanna come back to this, you can put on here A, D, and then B, E. And then when you come back to it, you will remember what you had, but I don't really like to put alpha bitties on top of here because that's just gonna slide off. So that's just something I do. So now, put this away. I am going to change my stitch length to like a 1.5. I'm going to use color 2000 Aurifil and I'm going to stitch directly on the dotted lines as, as accurately as I can. The reason I use Aurifil is because it's a little bit thinner but it's very strong. It doesn't leave as much lint as a thicker thread and um, that's just what I use. So I'm going to stitch those real quick and then I can answer any questions um, while I'm stitching. Yes. Uh, one of the first comments we got earlier was from Elena K. And Elena said, I was thinking, watching another episode on YouTube last night, is there a Fat Quarter Shop Anonymous group I could join as I am so addicted? That's funny. You could join the Kimberly Stitch Squad on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, so there'll be a, a subgroup in there. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and then we got a super chat early on from Valeria Bauer for $19.99. Thank you. Thank you so much, Valeria. She put a little dancing pair that says, you are amazing. And it's got the top oh, hat and a little cane. Thank you. Y'all wait till you see Lily. She doesn't look... Um, I was wondering when she came in if I was going to be able to guess who she's dressed up for for Halloween because I knew it would be Disney. <laughs> yes. Always. And I don't know that much about Disney, but I actually knew who it was. Yeah, she but I've her. never seen the video. I've never seen the movie, so I have no idea. So start putting your guesses. Down yeah, below. put your guesses in, and we'll see if anybody guesses. Yes. And I will say, I dressed up for y'all because I'm gonna dress up again tomorrow for the costume contest here at work. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. I was wondering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've won a couple of times, right? Uh, yeah. The first year when I was Snow White, I won, and then last year. Oh, I forget her name, but she had a real... Oh, it was Dee. She had a really cool costume. Yeah, I remember what it was, but it was very elaborate. Yes. And question from Kimberly Morton. Can you pair two 6-inch and one 12-inch block? Thanks. Can you can you tell me louder? One 6-inch, two 6-inch? Two 6-inch and one 12-inch. Yeah, you could put... Both. Yeah. You could... Um, I'll show you. So you could just pretend these are the blocks. Two six inch are right here. That would be two six inch, and then you would put a 12 inch. A nine inch will not work, so this is a nine inch block. This won't work. But if you do two six inch, you can put a 12 inch here, and then you would have six by, you would have 12 by 18. Okay, let me keep going. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Just real quick. Sometimes when I go slow, I don't, I'm not as accurate, which sounds funny. Let me just get the last couple scenes. Now, I kind of look on the back when I'm done to make sure it looks like I got all the lines, and I, I did. And now I'm going to just cut on the solid lines, and I will answer questions. A few people have been asking in your original version that you did in Homestead what the background fabric is. The background fabric, Ashley will need to answer. I don't remember, but it is from a different collection. I think it's from On the Farm. And we bought a ton of it, so we should have it in stock. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, Ashley can look it up because I don't remember. 
And we can put that on the next live stream. We can just put it in the document and then I'll remember. Mm. I have it somewhere. I just don't know where. And let's see. Teresa had said, we know that Ashley's favorite color is pink. What is Lily's? And I actually also want to ask you, Kimberly, what's your favorite color? Well, okay, let me guess what yours is. Purple? Okay. Purple. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, mine would be right here, this aqua or pink. Probably pink, though. Mm-hmm. Fat quarter top colors. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Let me, um, sorry. Okay. And question from Melanie Sawyer. Is there a reason you sew all the same way instead of turning it and going the other way? With no, the I just do whatever. No, there's no reason. Yeah. And it's as long as you're on the dotted line, right? Yeah, like as long as you're on the dotted line, it doesn't matter. And I, you know, some people follow these little arrows. I have never followed the arrows. Mm -hmm. I think it would probably take me too much time to follow the arrows. Mm -hmm. And we had a couple super chats come in. First one from Catherine Gaines for ten dollars and Catherine says loving all the sew along thank you all at fat quarter shop thank you and then our next super chat was from Laura Braziel for $4.99 thank, thank you, you Laura. and I'll get super piggy off the screen a little quicker so you guys can see what Kimberly's doing here So here, I cut around the outside. I'm going to do the inside. Now, I'm going to try to cut here, then here, then here, without it moving. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. So the key to making it work is doing that and then just kind of like lifting your ruler. And then here, I'll probably just cut these apart on their own. And then just in the middle, just cut these. It doesn't really matter. This is their seam allowance, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And then this little piece, you, I could have saved it and used it to cut that, but I didn't. But you could cut it, you could cut a one and a half inch square and save it for later. Okay, so now I'm going to go over one tip that some people do. I do not do this though, but I'm going to show you because somebody mentioned it in the comments. And it's something that I have done before. So I'm going to show it to you. It's not something I do, but it might help you. It might not. Let's see. So what some people do. Turn the steam off of your iron, have these flat, and just press a little bit. It makes the paper, some people think it makes the paper come off easier. I don't ever do it, but that's okay. So I'm going to just show you that because some people do do that. That's just something if you want to try. Now I'm going to pull all the paper off and hope that I don't hurt myself. Don Leslie was asking, what are the most popular sizes for the half square triangles? Papers. Two inch is definitely the most popular. One and a half and two and a half, but two inch is the most popular. Mm -hmm. And from Kathy Cronin, does the triangle paper dull the rotary color cutter blade more quickly? Uh, to me, it doesn't, but I use the endurance blade, and I use the endurance blade to make the entire designer mystery, which I'm going to show you part of, and I didn't have to change it at all. Mm -hmm. um, I would say I change my blade maybe once a month, and I quilt a lot. Um, but the endurance blade lasts much longer than the regular blade. When that first came out, I thought, oh, that's silly. And then I used it and was like, oh, that's not silly. And it's taking me a little bit longer today to get the paper off. I cut myself last night, which is why that is on my finger. And um, so I can't use that finger, so. Mm -hmm. 
from Valerie stitching in the barn, excited about the Priscilla and Chelsea farmhouse quilt and table runner, but nervous about using plaids. Any tips? Oh, okay. So I watch your YouTube channel. So thanks for watching. Yeah, she has a YouTube. She has a floss tube stitching awesome. in the barn, and her barn is awesome. I want to go to the barn. Oh, I have. Yeah, seen you her. have seen her. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think she released something this week. Um, so with plaids, I um do anything different I just kind of it you know you might want to just kind of on one side make sure you're cutting on the same like same line as the plaid I'm trying to think so like yeah so I can show you on this so like if you're working with this consider this a plaid I mean it's the same concept is when you you know maybe just cut right along the same line instead of like that because then it's gonna look funny but i um i think it'll come out good so here on this i've set my seams which means i press this down i'm gonna press to one side i'm gonna do i'm gonna show you how i do it on one now if i press to open right here well i'm gonna do one open and one to one side i've done this a million times but i'm still gonna do it so right here is what I, where I would cut my little dog ears off, which are those little things. I would cut it off now. And you'll see that when you cut it off, you cut off two. But if you press open first, you have to cut four off. And that's just way too much work. So I will press to one side, cut the dog ears off, and then press open. Now I have these two pressed open, and I'm gonna go ahead and set my clapper on them and let them sit while I'm ironing the rest. So those, I will just kind of put those on top of each other and put my clapper, and let it sit. We had a super chat from Winona Brewer for $5, and Winona said, Good morning from rainy Nashville. Thank you so much for Floss Tube and Behind the Seams. Addicted. Enjoy Emma's dance recital this weekend. Thank you. Oh my gosh, y'all. She's in nine dances. I'm like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> wait a minute, what? Wow. So I had to actually have Kevin put on his phone all the numbers because I know where it's... I've been to this convention center probably, I'm not kidding, 20 times, four dance. And the Wi-Fi doesn't work in the conference area at all. So if somebody texts me, I won't get it. Oh. So um, I basically had to say, write all these numbers down, and then you're on your own Saturday figuring out when she's dancing. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm excited. Mm. Yeah, I am so excited. But <laughs> Kevin and I were like, nine dances? How do you remember that? Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, I'm excited though. And we got another super chat from Susan Summers for four ninety nine. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. And then we also had a new YouTube member join, Homebody. Welcome, Homebody. Thank you. Awesome YouTube name. I think yes. a lot of us can relate. Yeah, and we're doing a video next week, right? Yes. For next, members. Next week, we are having a members only live stream. And on that, what we're going to do is go through all the moda slowly and all of the. Riley Blake slowly, and we are going to buy Robert Kaufman today, and we can go through that. Mm -hmm. That probably won't be on the Coming Soon page yet, but we can go through it. Okay. So now I'm going to press these open. And what I try to do, I don't know, how, it's hard to do with this machine right here, but I try to do them like at home, I do them like in a row. But it's almost impossible to do with this here. But kind of what I do at home is this. Like, I'm going to try to do it without burning myself. But this is kind of what I tr do at home. Well, this is what I do at home. It's very hard to do on camera. Mm -hmm. But it just, you never really, you never really have to lift your hand. Mm -hmm. Which, in the end, does save your, this wrist. 
So I'll do those and then I'll stick those under the mat. But that's how I save time. Oh, these I forgot to cut off the things. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited about going. We're leaving at eight o'clock tonight. I said, well, Ooh. Emma, can't we leave earlier? Oh no, I can't miss a dance class. I'm like, oh my word, child. So I'm gonna go home after. Well, first I'm gonna have a fa fabric meeting right after this and then um, I have to go home and figure out how to get that big dance bag downstairs. Wow. I think it's heavy. Question from Deborah Rogers. How long does the iron stay hot without shutting off? I don't know. Um, I think it's, it's got each of them. The Alisos have different timers. Like the yellow is different than the pink, I believe. Oh. I don't know that I don't. It does say on our website, if you click on the iron and scroll down, of course, we're out of stock on all of them. And I think they're pushing their dates back even more. Oh, wow. They were like November. Now I think they're quoting January. Mm -hmm. So. But yeah, each of the least, so I know they're different. Different. Um, I will unplug it. If I'm not going to use it, I will unplug it. But if it's going to be like I'm going to use it in like 20 minutes, I'll leave it plugged in. It says eight minute auto shut off. Okay. For the yellow. I think the, yeah, the pink is, I don't know what the pink is. And this block, I'm going to tell you guys, is one of the harder blocks in this series so on this one if you get frustrated what I would do is just walk away from it for a little bit and come back mm -hmm. this one is much harder the pink one is 30 minute auto shot off okay yeah I've had the pink and I've had the yellow and I like the yellow better mm -hmm. for whatever reason even though pink matches my sewing room better <laughs> so for a design board it's right here I'm going to lay out these. So it says make two, make two, make two. So I'm going to lay all of them out in order. So I'm going to try to keep this where you can see what I'm doing. This is one thing that I always use in my sewing room studio is always use the design board. I have them everywhere. So I'm going to lay out two of these. So this is laid this way and this way. So I've got one, two, three. I'm going to do another one. One, two. Now I'm going to do two of these right here. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And then this one, there, there. So when you're sewing this, you can do all of this and stop, all of this and stop, all of this and stop, or you can do it all at one time. So I'm gonna show you how you do it at one time. So I'm gonna change my foot on my machine to the quarter inch foot. And I'm going to do right down here. I'm going to do this, 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 cut my thread, and do the next one, this, this, this. So I'm doing two at a time. So I'm going to pick this up, put it together, make sure that it lines up, put it in my quarter inch foot, change my stitch length to like a 2.0. When I started, I didn't really start correctly. Let me start again. Take a few stitches. Do the next two right sides together. And this is chain piecing. And then this one. I'm a little clumsy with my little... Is that really rain out there? I'm pretty sure that's like a storm coming in. Oh my word. The rain's louder than the construction. Huh? The rain's louder than the construction. Yeah. 
So here, I've got this done. So I'm gonna put this here. So I've basically sewn this. Now I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna do the bottom layer. Wow, it is, I didn't even know it was supposed to storm today. I didn't know either. I don't watch the news, so that's what I get. My phone tells me every night what the weather's gonna be the next day. Oh. It didn't tell me about rain. Oh. Yeah. I'm gonna, that new iPhone comes out in a week. I'm gonna get it because my Ooh. phone's acting up. That's exciting. Well, it's like not, but Kevin did fix it. My mom kept saying, oh, I texted you this and you didn't write me back. I'm like, let me get your text. So Kevin did something which fixed that. Oh. So that's good. It was because it was connected to Christopher's iPad somehow. Oh. Okay. So now I'm going to bring my ironing pad back. And here I'm gonna press to one side and then open. So you can see that in between, I have a couple of stitches. If you don't do stitches and you just put them like right next to each other with no stitches in between, it's gonna kind of jam up on you. So that's kind of the key to chain piecing is to leave a little chain be between the pieces. So I'm gonna press down, press to one side iron is pretty hot. Uh, S. Seats was asking, do you use steam when you set the seams? Yes, but I have starched my fabric beforehand, so it is already pre-shrunk. And we have several videos on starching. I learned it from Primitive Gatherings, Lisa Bonjean. She has a channel. It's called Stitch with Lisa. A few people are asking what kind of wood the clapper is made out of. Okay, so we, I think it's maple based yes. on the feedback I've gotten. I bought them, Riley Blake distributes them, so I have bought the Riley Blake ones, and I also have one from Steady Betty. Yes. Okay, so now I've pressed open. This one needs a little bit. I'm going to set that there. I'll move it out of my way and I'm going to do the next one. And I think the key to this part is just ironing is slow and steady. So when I sew, I go really fast. I'm actually more accurate when I go fast because that's what I'm used to. But when I iron, I hardly ever go fast because it all, that's just, I feel like it just stretches your fabric or I'm not really sure how to explain it, but it just kind of gets distor distorted is a good word. Mm -hmm. And I love to iron. I love to cut. <laughs> I, I could just cut a bunch of stuff all day. <laughs> Teresa was wondering if we bought any of Janet Claire's The Blues. I don't think so. Chris Holosek was asking, do you know when the 12 inch clapper will be back in stock? Also, have fun at the dance weekend. Good luck, Emma. Thanks. Um, okay, put that on there. Okay, 12-inch clapper. Can Ashley email Ryan and find out? Because I don't remember. Please and thank you, Ashley. Sorry, <laughs> please. I don't remember off the top of my head. I do know that the Steady Betty is in stock. I know that one of these is coming back, and one of them has a two-month delay. That's what I remember. But I don't remember the sizes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm excited about tomorrow. Mm. So, now I'm going to come back and place this here. Make sure it looks correct. Chop the little chains apart. If I go back and start adding pieces and it's already chained together, I will get my seams going like this because there's pressure pooling from the bottom. But that's just my... So we're hoping, crossing our fingers with my cut finger, that there's no mistakes here. And we're going to chain down here the same exact way. Let's see. The clappers are due in December. Okay. But the Steady Betty are in stock. Yes. And they are made, I believe these are made in America. The Riley Blake ones are made in America. I know the original ones were, so. Mm -hmm. 
few people are asking what type of dance does Emma do. Okay. She does everything. Her solo is contemporary or lyrical, one of the two. Uh -huh. And she does hip hop, she does tap, she does everything. Um, I mean, I could put, if y'all want to see, I could put where her, I could put her, like, I could put the live stream information and y'all could watch if y'all want. Um, her solo's tomorrow, I don't even know what time, and her Saturday dance, I don't even know. I just know she has to be downstairs at four, mm -hmm. or in the convention center at four. And then, um, when you watch, you can only go watch your kid, which is totally fine with me. <laughs> um... That's also when I go, I'm like, this is why I need to get my eyesight fixed because it's really hard to tell which one she is because they do their hair so identical. Her old studio, you could do whatever you wanted. Like you could just do whatever, they didn't care. Mm -hmm. This studio, I mean, their hair is perfect. It is like slick back mm -hmm. and they slick it back with something that the, all their hair, even if they're blonde, all their hair turns the same color, I swear. So Whoa. like if your hair's blonde, but you mm -hmm. put that in there, it makes it look brown. So their hair all looks the same, and it's all got to be pulled back. Yeah. So I, so I have to just guess where she is and find her. <laughs> but I never sit in the front, so mm -hmm. that's also kind of part of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it. It's called the competition's called Dance Makers. Yeah, called to even make sure. I was like, are you sure if I check in at 10 o'clock at night, my room will still be there? And they were like, yeah. Just, I don't know, I just get worried about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would too. A question from Virginia Bovier. She says, hello, I am making a quilt right now and it has many little pieces that need to be cut from a three and a half yard, uh, yeah, three and a half yard piece of fabric, some as small as one inch. Any tips on how to break down the cutting? So for cutting, you can just cut into half yard sec sections and like cut off a half yard and then cut that all at one time. Mm. And then when you iron that half yard section, it's gonna be much flatter because you don't have all that bulk. So you can just cut off half yard, iron it, get it flat. That's what I do. I mean, sometimes, sometimes I don't, it just depends. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, on this, I'll just put them separate so you can see. Here, I'm gonna chop one of these off, only one. And then I'm gonna put these together, right sides together. Now this is where I pin. I'm gonna pin the outsides first. This is where I'm gonna get, my finger's gonna hurt. Okay, I'm gonna chop the little, you have to chop the chain off now because of when you press open. So I usually, yeah, when you press open, it'll Good it'll boy. catch. Mm -hmm. If you're not pressing open, you don't have to cut it. So this, I usually do the outsides. This is what I, and then I look. Can you zoom in? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So now you can see, that's perfect. Right there, that point needs to match that point. And over here, this point needs to match that point. So I call it poke a pin. That's what I call it, it's just made up. I literally poke my pin in the very point of that half square triangle. And then I go to this point, poke it in, let it sit straight up with that pin in, put a pin on one side. So hopefully that stays. It does sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. I do the same thing, I poke the pin. You could also eyeball it. I just don't have as much luck with eyeballing it. So right there, straight up. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. Linda Sherman Hall is asking, what is the largest cut of fabric you starch? <laughs> Three or four yards. Okay. If it's a backing. So if it's a backing, I'll cut, you know, I'll just starch like three, three and a half yards, whatever my, I'll cut my backing into whatever it needs to be. 
and then I'll starch it and I'll just lay it over a big piece. I will tell you the designer mystery that I'm gonna show you in a little bit. I did not starch the backing because I did not have time. So sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. You always should. If you starch the front, you should starch the back. But in desperate times, we do desperate things. <laughs> and when that quilt needed to be done, it just needed to be done. Mm -hmm. I, didn't have the, I didn't have the time to wait for it to dry. So now I'm gonna just sew these together. I pull the pin out right before I get to it. That's very controversial. Some people sew over pins. I don't. I try not to, let's just say that. But like Mar Barb and Mary, for me and my sister, they sew over pins. So literally do whatever you wanna do. I don't sew over, um, I try not to sew over pins. Because if my sewing machine broke in the middle of a project, I might start crying. So here I will, before I go to the ironing table, I'm gonna look and see if they match. And that one does not match, see that? That is not, that does not match at all. So that's coming out. Okay. So that does not match at all, that's coming out. And this one matches. So yay, we got one. Yay. I'm gonna find the seam. I'm gonna try this seam ripper. We should try a new one this week. I am going, now when I seam rip, I'm gonna hope that it works this time. I seam rip, I'll cut a little piece here and a little piece here and then pieces in between and then hopefully the back will come out. So I will seam rip. I'm gonna do it up here because I, so I can see because my eyesight is so bad. Sorry, Lily. You're good, that's fine. But I cannot see, so this is what. This is what we get. These seam rippers are shy on camera. They're shy on camera, yes. They don't like the close-up. They weren't ready for it. Well, at home I literally do that. I literally put the piece right to my eye so I can see oh. it. So that's why it's hard for me because my eyesight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just cannot see fine detail. Okay, so you can see I clipped a little bit. Now I'm going to go over, I'm going to clip on this side. It, this really does save time. I haven't been able to get a good, good demonstration of it yet. We'll see if it works this time. Okay, so now I'm going to, hopefully this will just come right out. The other side should just, this should just pull right out. So see that pulled out, mm -hmm. and then you just pick these little pieces off. Mm. Um, it, it's really hard to tell when you're doing a block this small, but it really will work if you're doing something big. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, this is a tip that I learned from Aditta. I'm going to try this one more time. First I'm going to poke the pin. Now, instead of starting here and going all the way across, I'm going to start right at the point and go across and see if it matches. That way, it doesn't have time to get out of whack over here. So I'm going to start right here. And that's something Aditta taught me a long time ago. So we'll see if it works. Ta-da! It matches. Yay. Now I will stitch from here to here. And just cover your previous, you know, cover a couple of your previous stitches so that you don't have a gap. Yay! Okay, so we're going to press these and then come. We're going to press these real quick. Let me get my little threads off. Shiba Sushi was asking, does Kimberly use a preferred hand lotion to pre prevent her hands from getting dry? Um, I have a bunch of lotions. I don't have like a specific one. Mm -hmm. I like them to smell like vanilla. That would be my only, there's that like Burt's Bees or something Bees. Mm -hmm. I get it in um, Salt Lake City with Lori. That's the one that I use, but I don't know the name of it. It's in my bag to go to dance. 
I can bring it next week. That's what I mainly use. It's just very subtle and it doesn't, I don't want a lot of grease. Mm. It's by the checkout at Quilted Bee, Quilted Bear. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I know what you're talking the about. The Honey Bee or something. It's like, um, it's a yellow. I think it is. Mm. It's yellow. I don't think it's Burt's Bees, but it's got bees in the name of the brand. Mm. And it's just yellow. And I, they don't sell it in Texas that I've seen. Yeah. I mean, I guess I don't really go shopping, but I always get it when I go to Quilted Bear because mm. it's by the checkout and I love the way it smells. And I've used it and it works, so that's what I use. Mm. But I don't always use it. And Lori, I see you're in the chat, so if you remember, please let yes. us know. Yes, yes, Lori, by the checkout stand. <laughs> okay. Crafting and Planned Life was asking if you will ever be making another size of the block live. Yeah, we can do that when I go to when I get to the next project. So I'm gonna make a some six. I'm gonna make a table runner out of this, and then when we go to the next. I'll pick a different fabric collection and then we can do either nine or three. I can do that and then the next project I can do the other size so I can switch. Yeah, that's what we can do. So now I'm going to, I always kind of keep this here and just look at this diagram and just make sure it's going the right way. Put these together now the design boards Lori has a video on our channel and she has a video on her channel on how to make these design boards mm -hmm. or you can buy them from fat quarter shop or make them yourself in my stash I have both so I'm going to pin the same exact way outsides and then insides people were saying the naked bee yes okay. that bingo and it's like honey the one that I get is like honey or vanilla or something like that it's very plain and it's not too strong I don't like perfumey smells um, so yes that is what I use and I have it in my um, I only I usually have two but now that I haven't been to Lori's in forever I only have one so it's in my I put it in my bag that's at home that's going to dance that's got all my um, cross stitch in it. You'll have to get more in a couple weeks. I know we're going to Quilted Bear. That is like the best store ever. Yeah. That'd have to be my all time favorite store in my whole life. That's really nice. Well, it's very it's nice like compare the prices to Austin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very, I mean, you can get a lot of bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. yeah. I really like all the stuff from like the. Um, local crafters that they sell mm -hmm. there. That's, that's just really nice. Okay. Yeah, so if you live in Utah, go there. It's um, it's called the Quilted Bear, and it's just got home decor. Mm -hmm. And all kinds of stuff, like all kinds of price points. It's just all kinds of stuff. All mm -hmm. kinds of looks, everything. And I just dropped that. Oh. Here we go. Okay, this is, we're getting to the end. So now we're just going to iron these and then we just have to put the four pieces together and we will be done. Yay. I know. Yay. Only one. Well, let's not jinx it. <laughs> I still have the rest to go. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed with my, uh, I like this thing. Yeah. So I cut myself pretty bad last night. I don't know. Well, I think maybe I know how I did it, but I'm really not honestly not sure. But I sat down in my chair and I had blood everywhere, like all over my hands. And I was like, oh my gosh. So my son ran and got a Band-Aid. And then the Band-Aid didn't really work because I cut myself up here. So a Band-Aid can't like really do oh, that. So yeah, so I called Kevin. I said, can you go to Walgreens and get new skin? And he did. And I put it on there. So it's on there. And then Kevin said, what is that? That stinks. And I was like, oh, this is like magic. <laughs> 
Because uh -huh. <laughs> I used to use it. I was like, oh, I used to use that in Creedmoor because that's where I grew up was in this little town called Creedmoor. Mm -hmm. That's what I, like when I was, when I referred to when I was a little kid, that's what I call it. I'm like, oh, that's when I was in Creedmoor. Because mm -hmm. my dad used to always use it. He's like, that stinks. I was like, yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. oh. Robin Pickin says, good morning, Fat Quarter Shop. So fun to see you making Devoted. I was able to make a nine inch one in Solana fabric too that I just posted in the Socialites Lounge. Yay! And that fabric just arrived in our store this week. Yes, and we're going to show the panels. Yes. Yes. Uh, Lily picked them out to show because she loves them. They're so cute, Robin. So here is your block. But if you want it, so that kind of looks like the, you know, the lights in the center, but you could rotate these and that would look totally different. You could rotate this mm. and just do that. You could do this. Mm. So you could do, um, I'm going to put it back the way it goes so I don't mess it up, but you don't have to make it the way we did. So that would be, if you were trying to do light dark, this is more of a light block. If you put this in your quilt, this would be more of a dark block mm -hmm. because it's where the center is kind of. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna do this, because I'm, I'm just gonna do it exactly like Robin designed it. And we're gonna stitch down here. To do that, I do match points. So put this right sides together, pin at the bottom, Boy, it is like thundering. I'm so glad. I went and got gas this morning and I had to get um, my tire pressures fixed. So I had a friend do that and then I had to put windshield wiper fluid in. So I got that done. I'm glad I did it this morning. Nice, yeah. So I do match those up and pin. And then just put a couple of pins in here. Yeah, I had no idea it was supposed to storm. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's hard to do this with my finger. Ooh. So again, pin right there. I think the pinning is the key to this block, but I can see some people getting frustrated with this one. Um, but I think whenever, like if I get fresh, well, the other day I was trying to cut, do a quilt and I got frustrated with it and I just like put it away and I'll come back to it, mm -hmm. but I can't really come back to it cause I cut it all wrong. I cut the whole, <laughs> I'm making the, the dinosaur quilt by Elizabeth Hartman for my son for Christmas. He knows, mm -hmm. but I cut some of the pieces wrong. So I have to restart. I mean, not, I didn't cut the whole quilt. I just cut one section and it came out wrong. And then I'm gonna try to finish the Harry Potter quilt for Will for Christmas. Mm. So, I just have to find time. Uh, we had a couple questions if we might know when Cider by Basic Gray might be in. When what? Uh, cider. Basic I, um, yeah, can, can y'all ask Lucy? Yes. And then answer, I'm not sure. Out the top of my head, I don't know that one. So this one, I do make sure this little point right here matches and this little point. Mm -hmm. And here, I'm going to press open, but if you don't want to, well, if you don't want to, you can press towards this and this, like that. Mm -hmm. You can do either. I guess I could press to one side to show y'all how you do it. It won't kill me. Okay. So I'll press flat, press toward this one because it's the least resistance. And when I do this, you'll see at the end how this has more bulk. See how that has a little bit of thing in it? Mm -hmm. See, that's why I want to press open because that'll go away. Mm -hmm. I'm going to press open. It's going to bug me. <laughs> I'm going to press this open. So a lot of times when I have a lot of these, I will use the Lori Holt seam presser, seam roller mm -hmm. because this is really hot and I've been burning myself the whole time. 
And if you do this, it makes it easier when you go back. If you're searching for that on our site, it's the Quick Press Seam Roller. Yes, Quick Roller. Press Seam Roller, it's amazing. And Teresa was asking, if you are out of an item that's one of the of the month sale items, do you allow rain checks if we ask? No, we do not. Okay. So I will leave that together and I'm gonna pin um, the outsides first. Matching the Half square triangles. Do both of those. And then I will match the center. I'll cut this little piece off, cut the little chain apart, match that. Now, of course, if that doesn't line up, nobody's going to know, but I still like it to line up. times here and then we're gonna chain piece right here And it looks good. It's a little bit off there. Can you zoom in? Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna leave it. Well, no, I'm not gonna leave it. <laughs> it's hard for me to leave it. So see, yeah. there's a little piece of piece there, but it's it's a hair off. Oh. It's just a hair off. So I'm gonna fix that. Mm -hmm. Now sometimes I'm picky about fixing stuff and sometimes I'm not. So for example, the designer mystery, when I sent that to Gina Tell, I said, okay, it's real good, but it's not, it's not my, it's not my best work, which means I didn't have a lot of time, but, um, cause usually my back is neater and I'll show y'all why. Mm -hmm. I'll show you what I did. That's different than normal. Donna Barron's asking, do you always pin outsides first? I do. That's just a habit. It's not a rule. Like nobody told me to do that. I just made it up. Pin again. better. So I'm going to iron it real quick. Take this off. Angela Stoutinger said, remember we turned back the clocks this weekend, so an extra hour to sleep or an extra hour to sew. I know, I'm excited, especially because I'm going to be at a hotel. I don't mm -hmm. ever sleep good at a hotel. The first night I never, I could hardly sleep at a hotel. Mm -hmm. The second night I'm always good, but the first night. Okay. Let that sit a little bit and then I'll clear the table. Yay. 
we did have some new YouTube members that have been joining. Amy Waycaster. Welcome, Amy. Thank and you. And Jenny I. I believe that's an I. Welcome, Jenny I. And Elaine Madsen. Welcome, Elaine. Woohoo. Thank you. And Wilma Evans was asking, how is Piggy doing? Oh my gosh, he is good. He is a little too, he is so funny. He's been really wanting a lot of food. We got him, sometimes we, okay, so for pugs, um, they recommend sometimes giving them pumpkin, like mix in their food, it's like a powder. Yeah. So the nanny, she cooks him rice every day. She puts the pumpkin in, uh -huh. she adds water, she mixes it, and then she puts his food, like his wet food, on top. Uh -huh. And so yesterday he ate too much. Oh. Just because, I mean, he just wouldn't stop eating. He was so excited that we got the pumpkin. Yeah. So. But it's, it's I mean, it's for all dogs. It's like meant for dogs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, oh, okay, now we need to trim the block down a little bit. So. Can you zoom in a tiny, tiny bit? Mm. Thank you. Okay, so you can see how it's like, it's kind of curvy. You can tell that this is not straight. Now this side ended up pretty straight, but this is how all the blocks come out. So what I'm gonna do is just put my ruler. I always use creative grids. I'm gonna put this on my center line. I'm going to put this little quarter inch line on the Creative Grits rulers, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> one side has white lines and one side has black dotted lines. I prefer the side with the black dotted lines. I make that hit the center. It looks like I have a tattoo, Lily. <laughs> look, it looked like I have a tattoo. I was like, wait, I don't have oh, a tattoo. Because <laughs> the shirt. Okay, so there yeah. and there, and then I trim. And it's just take a little bit off and I do all four sides and I do this slowly and I do not ever just put a square ruler on top because I have not had good results with that. kind of a wonky wonky block but this is a harder block so it's not gonna come out perfect when you quilt it it will look fine mm -hmm. so I'm gonna show you all my blocks in a row and you're gonna see they're not exactly six and a half they all come out different sizes and that's okay. When you put them together, and maybe when I get to the end of this, I can show you how to turn it into something and how I sew them together. That might be interesting. We'll see if y'all are interested. But you can see this one came out a lot bigger, about a quarter inch bigger. Mm. It's okay. In the end, it's gonna all work out. So um, don't be scared and don't worry about if it's, you know, these are gonna come out more accurate because they're easier. These are gonna come out less accurate because there's so many seams. <clears throat> so it's impossible, sorry, <clears throat> it's as allergies. It's impossible with all of these seams for them to come out exactly six and a half. So don't worry about that. When this is together and quilted, it's gonna be beautiful. And you see this little hump right here? You can, right there, that thing. Oh. That'll come right out when you quilt it. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> um, it drives me, that little stuff drives me crazy, but it'll quilt out. So that is what I have. Let me answer any questions on social lights before I take a little break. And um, we have to see if anybody has guessed Lily's costume, right? Has anybody guessed yet, Lily? Uh, no one's guessed correctly yet, as far as I've seen. The most popular guest so far is Mulan. Uh, that I haven't seen that movie. I haven't seen any of the movies. I've seen Snow White, maybe Cinderella, and I know I do know the story of the long hair. Oh, Rapunzel. Rapunzel. I do yeah. know that one. And it is none of those. I will tell you that. Um, uh, someone had guessed Snow White. Uh, I was Snow White two years ago, and we actually have. I come out on our floss tube that year, so we can 
share that. Some people said Mary Poppins. I was Mary Poppins last year. Oh, you were. Yeah. I spoke with a British accent all day. It was very fun. Uh, a few people said Maleficent, Evil Queen, Minnie Mouse. Uh, I very highly considered both Maleficent and the Evil Queen this year. But I went with something simpler. What movie is that? Uh, Maleficent is from Sleeping Beauty. Okay. And Evil Queen is from Snow White. She's okay. the Evil Queen. Oh, okay, in Snow White. okay. Yeah. Yeah, most of the characters in Snow White are like the Evil Queen. It's charming. Like, they don't have names. They just have. Oh, like, uh, well, it was like an earlier one, right? It was the first one. Very oh, first okay. One, well, yeah. there you go. <laughs> um, and let me see. Oh, someone said Lucille Ball. I'll tell you all. Kimberly wanted me to dress up as Betty Boop. <laughs> why, yeah, why didn't you? Uh, her outfit is not work appropriate. So. <laughs> oh, well, see, I don't even know. I don't even really. It's like a cartoon, right? Yeah, she's a cartoon. Um, but. Oh, okay. Yeah, her outfit's like this tight little dress with like. Little, oh, yeah. okay. So I was like, I don't think I can wear that to work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. Lily was like, "Are you gonna dress up?" I was like, "No." Mm-hmm. I did dress up one year for like um, Starbucks. That's about. I don't know. I've never really been into Halloween. It's um, when we were little. I we lived on one street. It was uh, one street, and it just had houses. It was two acres. There was like twenty houses or something. This street in the middle of nowhere. We used to, we didn't dress up. We just went to each other's houses and we didn't really dress up. And then when I married Kevin, Kevin is like so into holidays and tradition and like how it has to be for Halloween. I'm like, I'm not even, Mm -hmm. I don't even, I don't even try to get in because he like really likes it his way. And so I'm like, you do Halloween however you want to do. I don't, my boys don't have costumes, so I don't know what they're going to do. They, I know there's something at the pool that the neighborhood is doing. So I know they're going to do that, but I don't know if he's going to go get them Halloween costumes last minute or I'm going to tell them just to dress up in their pajamas because <laughs> they have like fluffy pajamas, like those stitchy stitch. Yeah. 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 They ha- one of them has that. I'm like, that'll work. Yeah. Those are cute. Um, I was very tempted to do that. I have a little mermaid one. That's that like the onesie. But the it's onesie. Like I would wear a onesie, but I don't know if I could do it. I mean, I just don't know if I, I mean, like this morning I went to the gas station and I walked in the gas station. Y'all want to know what I did? Okay, this is so embarrassing. Okay, when I go out of town, I really like my car to be clean and just ready. I don't want to be stuck somewhere. I don't know how to do anything. I don't know how to change a tire. I don't know how to do any of that. So my tire pressure was off. So one of my friends works near here, and he did my tire pressure for me. And I needed some windshield wiper fluid. So I went to the gas station, and they didn't have any. So I bought Windex and put it in. (laughs) He was like, Kim, you really shouldn't do that. I'm like, it's fine. Just throw it in there. Like, just put it. It'll work. I was like, just put Windex in there. Oh, it'll work. Well, the, the guy at the gas station said that they haven't had it for two months for oh, whatever wow. COVID. Yeah. So I was like, well, whatever, Windex. Just mm-hmm. throw it in there. <laughs> so I'm going to take a break. Has anybody guessed yet? No, it is a princess. I'll give that hint. Okay. Hey, we're about to. Okay, let me find oh, my, my mask, mask, though. Okay, where did I put it? Oh, here it is. Okay. Are you going to go that way? Uh, whichever way you don't feel, I will Okay. Grab a full costume here. Okay. Oh, she had to add to it. Oh my gosh, I didn't see that part. <laughs> yes, I, I have props. I have accessories. That cart. Hello, everyone. Let me take my mask off here for the, the full effect. Uh, good morning. I'm Lily, but today I am, well, Aurora, but technically Briar Rose from the movie Sleeping Beauty. Um, yes, here, I'll kind of step back. I'll move the basket. Got my little basket yesterday. Yes, hello. I'll do a little twirl. Yay. All right. How's everyone doing? Uh, So what I have to show for you guys today, I typically show you guys my progress for Journey to Nebula this week because I was a little busy working on this costume. I didn't get very far, um, but oh, and I didn't bring my phone up here to change the cameras. That's fine. Uh, This week for Journey to Nebula, we are working on the cutting for this pattern, Candy Dish, and it makes two pillows uh, and you use a charm pack with it. So if you guys have been following along with my Journey to Nebula, it is a skill builder, skill builder series leading up to the block of the month, Nebula, that's happening next year. 
It is hosted by Jaybird Quilts, and for all of my projects, I have been using the Liana Fabric Collection by Kimberly Kite of Ruby Star Society. And let me tell you all about my costume a little bit more because that's what I worked on this week. So I went through a lot of costume ideas as I do every year for Halloween because I'm extra and I want to dress up. I don't officially cosplay, like I've never, I've been to like one con, uh, like Comic Con style thing, but that was about it. And I didn't even prepare a costume for that. But uh, for this, I was originally going to be Merida from Brave. And I found the wig and everything, but I like making my own costume or thrifting something to then make the costume. So for Merida, I wasn't finding anything at the fabric stores locally um, that's like more apparel fabric um, or even at the thrift stores, anything that I could make her costume out of. If you guys know my costume from last year for Mary Poppins, that was actually made out of a wedding dress that I found at the thrift store. So for this year, I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go to the thrift store and see what I can find. And I wanted to go simpler because I'm not really going out for Halloween this year. I was really just going to wear it for y'all. And we have a little costume contest here at work. So it was really for that. And what this is actually made out of, the only thing I bought yardage of is this little shawl thing. Um, it's actually like a stretchy knit fabric. It's very cozy. But the corset is made out of a maternity dress I found, the skirt of it. I cut out all the course of pieces and sewed it together and the skirt is actually made out of a giant tablecloth I found at the thrift store so it can really just look like this uh, <laughs> so that's how this costume came together the shirt is like the best part it's actually a dress underneath and I've had this shirt since I was eight years old <laughs> and it's just huge it's been huge my whole life so it finally fits well um, and I saw someone who did a cosplay that had a similar shirt for this and that's how it all came together uh, the wig is actually from Walmart. I treated it with a lot of fabric softener and different things to make it look a little nicer. And yeah, that that is my costume. I hope you all enjoyed that and I will give the floor back to Kimberly. Do do do. Do do do. Does it get sweaty with your wig? Uh, no, I think it helps that my hair short. Like I do have a wig oh. cap on underneath, but it's not too bad. Do do do. Intermission over. Thank you. Yeah. See how much personality she has? <laughs> <laughs> she has way more personality than Aww. I do. She's way more fun. So I did want to show you guys this. This is one of the questions we got last week. When you put your quilt together, so I'm going to be making the nine, the six, and the three. When you put your quilt together, you need 16 of these large half square triangles. So I made those out of this bundle. And this just came in stock. It's the Homestead Petite Bundle because we just got the yardage of this. So if you're making yours just like mine and you're going to do these accent points, you'll use this. And when I say just like mine, I mean, let's see. these. So I made all of the blocks ahead of time in all the sizes. And so if you're going to be doing yours like mine, you can just use this bundle. And so I put that together because these are the pieces that I'm going to put around here. So I wanted to show you guys that because we got that new. I'm going to show you a couple more things. I don't have much more today because I do have a fabric meeting to get to because you guys want fabric, right? <laughs> fabric, fabric. My, my office is full of fabric. Okay, this might fall. My, fab my office is full of fabric. So I'm gonna give you a tease. Ooh. And I'm gonna show you designer mystery. So we just kind of folded it and this is a hint. I can't show it to you because it's a mystery. This, you will make uh, two blocks similar to this and this is your setting and this is your border. It's beautiful. The finishing uses four fabrics, or five fabrics, which is the background. This print, which has a little bit to it. This red, this green, and the binding. And this is the backing that I chose. I usually do a light backing, but this print is so beautiful and has so much movement and is so pretty. And we weren't able to use it on the front since we have small pieces on the front. 
So I thought, well, we've got to use it somewhere. And I think it looks great. I'm going to show you on the back what I did for my, oops. <laughs> Let me, hold on. Okay, I'm going to show you what I did to cheat because I didn't have a lot of time. Well, I had no time. So usually what I do when I'm doing my backing, I usually would piece this as a block, add a strip and a strip, and then add this strip and this strip. I did not have time. So I added, I made a block. I turned under the sides with a hot hammer, put it on top, stitched it down on top, and Gina quilted over it. So, um, and I did not starch the backing. And so that's what I did for the backing. Gina Tell quilted it. I don't want to show the front because I'll show too much. But you can see I picked a rose print. She hasn't done, let me find a corner. So maybe you can see it. I'll show you this corner. So now you can really see the quilting right here. I wanted to pick something that we hadn't done before. And I do prefer pantographs. Some people prefer custom. And so she got this one for me. So if you um, make this and want it the same, Gina Till knows the, the pattern. Really pretty. So I just want to show you guys that. So if um, Designer Mystery, the signups will end, let's see, that starts, it starts in June next year. And signups, I'll kind of tell you when we get near to where this always sells out, but we kind of buy, the what we try to do with this program is sell out by right when it starts. So that way we know the exact number to cut. And so we're not like adding stuff all year. So we have kind of found the, the magic number is to try to sell out right when it starts. So this is my beautiful quilt. I'm so excited. Yay. And then I've got some other stuff to show you just a little bit more. These are the brand new panels by Solana. I mean by, sorry, Solana panels by Robin Pickens. Mm -hmm. And I've shown them to you before, but I wanted to just show you again. Lily really likes them. Yes. So beautiful. And I like the little ladybug. I like ladybugs. Oh, yeah. I like ladybugs. They're so pretty. Yes. That's about the only bug I like. Let's see. And then this one is beautiful too. And so this fabric is now in stock, all the yardage. And right now with Moda, we're receiving yardage before pre-cuts. Mm -hmm. And this is a quote from Helen Keller. So pretty. And then I wanted to show you the Stitch Pink and Breast Cancer Awareness. So Kevin and I are going to donate 25% of the proceeds of sales of these two stash and stores in the month of October to the National Breast Cancer Foundation for their work providing early detection, education, and support services. So if you buy these, we're going to give 25% and then we're going to mail a check at the um, like November 10th or something. So I just wanted to let y'all know about that. That is on our blog and that's really all I have today. But I'm happy to answer any questions or um, anything you have. We will be back to regular, sorry. We will be back to regularly scheduled programming next Friday. So. All right, yeah. Jillian Billon says, is there a pattern around the Solana pat panels? You know, there probably is. I don't know off the top of my head. I know that Quilt Moments, if you Google Quilt Moments, she has a lot of patterns to use panels. So I would just start there. And we had a new YouTube member join, Cindy Haniak. Welcome, Cindy. Thank you. And then some super chats that have been coming in from Lori Roth. She gave us a $5 super chat and she put a little dancing pair that's like blowing the- Bazooka. Bazooka, yes. I Thank you. what those are called. And then our next super chat was from Janet Buster for 1999, and Janet put the dancing pair that says "You are amazing." Oh, thank you. And then our last super chat here for the moment is from Gabriel Fuentes for $1.99, and Gabriel says, "Tell Emma I said good luck at her dance convention." Oh, thanks. If you want, I can send you the link if you want to watch it. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I haven't seen her solo, so I haven't even seen. Have no idea what the song is. I have no idea what, I'm nothing, I know nothing. Usually, you know, you see it ahead of time. 
I know that she has a really fancy costume. Ooh. She like custom designed it and every, I mean, I didn't make it. That's but awesome. yeah, so there's a lady on Instagram that we found from a friend like three years ago. And you just measure her and it's, it's pink. Pink, my favorite color, but it's blush. I guess it's not pink, it's blush. Yeah. And it's got a whole, it's like all, what is that, rhinestones? And it goes, psh. Yes. Oh, and I know everybody's going to be like, how much did that cost? I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, don't <laughs> ask. Um, but yes, thanks for uh, wishing her good luck. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, do something positive this weekend. And I will see you guys next week. Bye, everyone. Happy Thank Halloween. Thank you.